internet, time to look at the graduated filter in Lightroom. Now, where this came from is a week or so ago, I posted a blog post on the Wildlife Photo Chat blog in which I did some screen grabs of what's possible with the graduated filter, especially with skies where you've got a blown out sky, which happens often in wildlife photography, and you can then fade it back in without doing brushes or anything like that. So it's a gradual, graduated adjustment. Now, before we get into it, just from a processing point of view, how you should, no, not how you should, how I approach my processing, and it, it's a kind of a theory that works, it's a formula that works, is start big. So do your basic adjustments first, global, work down from there. Once you're happy with the global picture, then go in smaller and look at the, the localized adjustments, of which the graduated filter, the radial filter, and your special adjustment brush are the three that you can use there. So... If you look at an image, and I'll do a video on this later, how to approach an image, don't just start brushing here, brushing there, then jump to this tool. Go in a step-by-step, -step, kind of a methodical manner, without being too rigid, of course, and then um, go big and smaller. So radial, sorry, yeah, graduated filter first, then radial filter, and then your brush. So for today, graduated filter. Let me take it into Lightroom. I'm going to be working on the same image which I used in the blog post because it's actually a very good example um, and there's a small little tip in there which I'll throw in at the end. So, if you have a look at this image, this is from the Chobi last year, photographed beautiful buffalo standing on the edge of the water, but the sky is blown out. Now, you'll see on the side here, I've done some basic adjustments just to get the image to a certain point. I'm happy with the majority of the image, yes? The grass, the buffalo, and the, the, the what's this called in front? The water, <laughs> the water in front. But the sky is not like I remembered it. Remember, your eyes, the human eyes, have 24 stops of uh, light that they can see. Even the best cameras now is about 12 to 14. So you need to be able to work, and that's where ATR comes in, um, and pull detail from the highlights, from the darks, to get to a happy medium. Remember, my goal is to show you an image naturally of how I took it. So, this is the final, I finally processed this image, and I've just turned my special adjustment off. I'll show you how to do this now. There's my basic adjustments, let's close that, and now we're gonna move up. Like I said, you've got the graduated filter, there's a radial tool and a special adjustment brush, and I normally try and use them in that order, because graduated, big, radial will come smaller, and then brush I can fine tune. It makes sense to me to go big, small, well, big, smaller, and then smallest adjustments. It kind of flows nicely. So, I'm gonna open my graduated filter, which the shortcut is M. M opens and closes that filter. Nice one to remember. Now, you can see there's some adjustments made here, but I've turned this button at the bottom here, I've turned the special adjustment of the graduated filter off. I can turn that on and off here. Watch what happens. That is where we're gonna take this image to. I'm gonna do this with you now. So you can turn it on and off to see how dramatic that result can be. Now, if I'm honest, and we try and do this in wildlife photography, that is what I remember from on the chubby. We were on the, on the boat, and this is what I saw. So that's ultimately my processing and yours, if you're keen on natural wildlife, should be to try and get to a natural point, what you saw. Right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to now reset all my special adjustments on a graduated filter, and we're going to start from scratch. So, if you have, and this goes for all the special adjustments, if you have a bunch of sliders that are all over the place, you can either double-click each of them to take it to zero, or you just double-click on the word effect at the top, and it'll zero the whole bunch. So, graduated filter, how this works, you draw a line, right? So you get the cursor on the image, you draw a line and draw down. You'll see three lines appear. Now, bear with me here. Top, middle, and bottom. The adjustments that you are going to make in your side of the graduated filter will be applied from the top line 100% above that top line, yes? So the top line would be 100%, and above that will be 100% of the adjustments you make on the side. From the top line to the middle line, it fades down to 50% of that adjustment. So let's say you had two stops of exposure, it'll fade down to one stop of exposure. From the middle line then, it fades down to zero, and underneath the bottom line, it is zero adjustments that you have on the side. Graduated filter, it gradually blends in the adjustment, right? So, once you've drawn your line, you can move this around by grabbing the, grabbing the dot, and you can move it all over your image, yes? You can also grab the top, you can make it smaller from the top, smaller from the bottom. This is for you to fine tune where you want this on your image. And um, if you want to turn this or twist, you can hold in the middle, turns into a little, uh, what's this squiggly arrow icon, and you can twist this around. 
You can see my horizon is a little bit skewed, so we're going to do this later on. Um, alternatively, if you want to remove backspace, I'm going to add a new one. If I hold shift, now I mentioned this in the blog post, go and check it out. If I hold shift and I draw it down, it will lock it to a flat line. It cannot rotate then. Sometimes it's difficult to get that flat line. Same thing. If I was to draw one from the, oh, just close it. If I want to draw it from the side and I hold shift, it'll lock the orientation to the closest 90 degrees. So you can't get the angles. Very handy. Right. Now think of this. If I take, dogs are making lots of noise anyway. So, if I go from the top down, yes, and I draw a big one like this, let's just play with the exposure for a moment so we see what we're doing, and let's drop the exposure all the way. You can then see, yes, how from the top line above, 100% exposure, 100% drops to 50, 50 to zero, and nothing below. So if you have a sky that's huge and you can fade it in and make it look natural, that's fantastic. But, I'm going to zero that. If I have an adjustment like this, yes, I'm going to put my middle line on the adjustment. I might have to just twist it slightly to fine-tune it. Something like there. Yeah, that'll do. And then, hello Adele, say hello. Hello. Okay, so if I'm going to do this, I'm going to make a smaller adjustment. I'm going to grab this all the way down, and I'm going to bring this all the way up, so that I isolate the adjustment around this horizon, yes? But I want to make it as small as possible, so that you cannot see that change. Watch now. So everything above my top line will be adjusted 100% of what I do on the side, nothing below, because I want to work on the sky. Yes. Forget that the buffalo is in my top adjustment now. We're going to work with that in a little bit. So let's drop this down. Watch. Ignore the buff. Yes, ignore the buff. Yes, he's dark. Watch what happens to the sky. Right. What's the problem? The sky already looks more like what I remembered when I was there. Buffalo is too dark. What is he? He's dark, so now I can take my shadows and pump it back up. Boom, that's how quick it is. So what's happened? You should not be able to see, even if I zoom in on this, we shouldn't be able to see where that adjustment is. That's why I keep it nice and small. So if you have a horizon line that's pretty clean and neat, which I have here, let's zoom back out, um, I would do a small, keep the lines very close together. Yes, I wouldn't spread it because even if someone is not photographically literate, they're going to struggle to see how the light can fall in a faded manner. In this case, I'm working just the sky. So, I've dropped my exposure, yeah, and I've upped my shadows because I want to keep my buffalo as natural as possible. Right, in this case, we're not far off. What you can do, I'm going to back the shadow up a bit. I can duplicate, now a lot of people don't know this, you can duplicate this special adjustment, graduated filter, it also goes for radial and for the special adjustment brush by right clicking on it and say duplicate. Watch this. Boom. It goes way, way, way too dark. But I know then I've got the exact same area. Think of it as layers on top of each other. Yes. I can now zero this. It's like the top one is now see through, if you will. And now I can adjust just the shadows. It won't touch anything else. And I can fine tune, for example, my saturation. Yeah. Let's keep it there. So if I turn this on and off, look what we've done already. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff thrown in there. I can still fine tune how wide I want this, but you get the idea. Now, let's do another one, because think of this artistically now. I've made a change to the sky, which made it darker and more colorful. This so saturation's back. I've done nothing to the water, yes? If I look at the scene even now, the sky looks too dark for the water, so I'm gonna have to make an adjustment to the water as well. So, I come down, and this time I'm going to draw a graduated filter from underneath up. So I'm going to hold my shift button because I want to isolate it around this area here. I might make this one a little bit more fluid, if you will. Yeah. Somewhere there. And I'm going to do, reset that, and just drop it maybe a little bit. Yeah. So I'm just dropping down my exposure. So I'm trying to balance the frame to keep it natural. Okay, let me close this. Uh, I'm going to turn this off. So from there to there. You get the idea. What I could do now, we'll look at this in a future episode, is I can now take my special adjustment brush and just work on the buffalo to bring it up naturally, if you feel that is too dark. Yeah? If you feel it's too dark. So that's a graduated filter, quick and easy for wildlife. It works very well if you have a flat horizon with a, a giraffe or something standing up. Remember, if you drop the exposure, you need to lift the darks or the, what's it called, the shadows just a little bit to try and balance it out. 
or you can start layering the things on top of each other. Shortcuts to remember, M opens and closes this tool for you. Shift while holding it draws and locks your orientation to the closest 90 degree. If you're working in this now, last tip is you can hit H and it hides the pins on your image as well as the light. So if you want to marvel at your own work, you can do that. It makes it much easier to work on. Right. That's a, let's call it an intro onto the special adjustment uh, brush. No, this is not the brush, Jerry. It is the graduated filter. As an intro onto the graduated filter. We can look at this in more detail because there's ways in which you can use this to create beautiful vignettes around rather than having that hallmark card look. But we can look at that in the future as well. If you have any questions, go and check out the blog post I did. I'll link it in the text on YouTube here. And um, otherwise, we can pick it up next time we move to radial and then we'll look at the special adjustment brush again. You can watch this video right here bing, that I've done in the special adjustment brush and what those th sliders mean. Use them in combination, but always go. Big adjustment, graduated, smaller radial, smallest fine tuning brush. Easiest way to do it. My name is Jerry. This is the Wild Eye Photo Chat. I will see you guys next time. Have a good one.